market their service to make money. Yeah. It's, rather than how to build your business and make money. Right. And it's a trade off. Um, what you're seeing is that they're selling you that service, but not baked into it is selling you the way to market or, or create a product or something like that. So it's, they, they would have to charge extra for that. And that's the traditional way, but builder all is not traditional, right? They do things very different. Um, and I love the fact that Builder All sells you the tools and then they give you people like me, Terry, James, Sebastian, all these people that are training you, not just on how to use the tools, but strategy and technique as well. So i um, super duper excited that we're doing this class on selling physical products. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in, you guys. This is day one of selling physical products on Builder All. And today we're just going to talk about the idea of selling physical products because there's there's some things that some of you guys may know a lot about. And then some of you guys are going to absolutely have your brain just kind of blown today. You didn't even know that stuff was out there. So um, hopefully I'll blow all of your minds, but I'm going to be happy if I just blow one. Just one mind is good. Um, so we're going to talk about selling physical products. And then I've got a completely different boot camp on how to do digital products because they're actually done very, very differently. So physical products are products like you can put your hands on, right? So it's going to be something like um, this Elfin book. That's a physical product. I can put my hands on it. And what I'm going to have to do is ship it to somebody, right? So after I sell it, I have to ship it to somebody. And that's probably the biggest difference between um, the digital and the physical is the product delivery because you have to be aware of how you're going to deliver that product to your customer. Luckily with physical products, the main way you deliver is just shipping it to them by using an address. But it's so much more complicated than that. As we go through and set things up, you're gonna see a lot of things on how to set up the shipping part of your physical product business. We're also gonna talk about selling one physical product versus setting up a whole store like a Magento store. So one of the last things we'll do is actually set up a Magento store from scratch. And you guys can see how we actually set up an e-commerce store, being able to sell physical products, collect the um, shipping address, and then ship that stuff out to the customer. So we're going to start with one single product and setting up to sell that one single product and then setting up a whole store and being able to sell a multitude of products inside that whole store, okay? So we got a lot to go through this week because even though maybe on the surface it doesn't sound like very much, it is a lot of information. So <laughs> the first thing I wanna do is actually kind of go through some housekeeping rules because we have a whole bunch of people here and I just wanna make sure that everybody gets served with this training. So the first thing I wanna tell you is make sure while you're on the training to watch your microphone. It is super duper easy to accidentally unmute yourself because all you have to do is hit the space bar. And then when you do, if you make a noise, it actually steals my microphone away from me and it actually, then they can't hear me, they're only hearing you. Um, and if you're a type of person that coughs or sneezes or your dog barks, that's all everybody hears because I'm talking away but they can't hear me. Um, so no worries, you're not going to get beat with a wet noodle if it happens or anything, because it happens to everybody. Just try really hard to pay attention to that microphone. You'll see it on your picture. If there's a red line through it, that means you're muted. Um, and try to stay that way, especially when I've got, when I do a, um, live screen share, because if you go and ask me a question during live screen share, I can't really see you and I can't see your eyeballs. And one of the things you'll hear me say about a thousand times is let me see your eyeballs because then I can see, um, I can actually kind of connect with you and feel and understand what you're saying better than if I'm just hearing your voice when I'm sharing my screen. That's, that's kind of my big thing is I like to look in people's eyeballs. So um, try really hard to wait until I'm doing a, a uh, where I'm seeing everybody. Like right now I can see everybody. That's the best time to ask me a question. Because then I can look at your eyeballs. It helps me to understand better. And then I can hopefully answer you better. Plus, I'm a really expressive person. So I use my hands a lot. If somebody tied my hands, I would not be able to speak. So when I'm speaking to you, I like being able to emphasize things with my hands. So it's always better if we're looking each, at each other while I'm answering you. Then the next thing is that you may have one of those burning questions. 
I have them all the time. Um, if you have a burning question, I don't want you to forget it. So what I want you to do is I want you to have a parking lot. And I'm putting mine together right now, right in front of you guys. This is my parking lot. And to show you what it looks like, it's just a piece of paper. And guess what it says on it? Parking lot. <laughs> and all you do there is when you come up with one of those burning questions, write that bad boy down. Make sure you write it down because I want to get it answered. There's so many great questions that you guys have, and it would be tragic if it just disappeared from your brain, right? Like an etch a sketch. Somebody shakes you and it's gone. We don't want that. So write it down and also understand that if you ask a question and I say, let's go ahead and answer that at the end, I'm not necessarily um, pushing you off. I am pushing you off, but it's not in a mean way. It's in a way of it's, it's maybe not related to what we're discussing at that moment. And I've got a flow going that I don't want to interrupt. So let's push it to the end of the session so that our flow is over and we can start answering those questions. OK, so any questions about any of those uh, housekeeping rules before we get started? Y'all got it? All right. Everybody's on board. I love it. All right. So what we're going to start what, with. What do you just say? Uh, Shelly, can you repeat it? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I can. And you know what? I'd have twice as much fun doing it twice. <laughs> All right, you guys, let's go ahead and get started with the lesson today. Today, we're just going to talk about um, places that you can find physical products. Okay. So there are many, many different places that you can find physical products that you can sell. This is actually, to me, one of the most fun things that you can do with setting up a website that's going to sell physical products is actually finding the products. So the first thing that you need to try to kind of nail down is what kind of products are you looking for? Um, what kind of website do you want to make? And how do you want to niche down your products? There are so many products on this planet that if you're just doing a wide open website and, and you're... I, I can actually see your brains right now. You're all going, I'm going to sell something. I'm going to sell a physical product. That's great. What product? There's only 50 bazillion products out there. So it's time to start narrowing down the idea of what you want to sell. Kavita? Yeah. One of the things to look at is what's your niche that you're already in and what industry you're in and what products fit that niche. That's right. So niche is very important. Kavita is exactly right. What do you want to sell this in a specific niche? But there's also the time period, right? Um, right now is the perfect time to have a website put together to sell individual products that are hot items for Christmas, right? This is the perfect window of opportunity to get that done. And why do I say that? Because a couple of years ago, I, I, I had just started Builderall. I was brand new to Builderall. And I built my first websites in Builderall based on two products that I wanted to sell to try to make some extra money for Christmas. And uh, so I really did my homework to see what was uh, popular and what things were going to be like the, the top items. So you can actually type that into Google search. You can say top Christmas items for 2019. And it will come up with a bazillion websites that will give you ideas on what are going to be the top products for Christmas time to be able to sell. And so I did that and I found out that finger monkeys were really popular and finger monkeys are when you hold out your finger, they're little bitty monkeys that sat on your finger. They're little plastic little characters and they're for kids. And when they held them on their finger, their little eyeballs would blink and their little ears would kind of move and their tail would move. They were adorable. I could see why they were really popular. And the company that made them, made them in very limited quantities. So that supply and demand thing was huge, right? There was a high demand and a short supply. So you had premium pricing that you could do. Um, if you could find a supplier, you were, you were in, and you were in light gold. So I actually did a ton of research, found a great supplier, and got them out. The next thing that I found that was huge was fidget spinners. Now, when I say this, I see Chip just do that, that, oh my God, seriously, because as a teacher, I would have never let a fidget spinner in my classroom, right? Never. But as a marketer, it was like, dude, I'm selling me some fidget spinners. 
Um, and I found some really, really cool fidget spinners that when you spun them, they, they would light up and they were like really, really awesome. I was like that, those are the fidget spinners I want to, I want to sell. So I found a, a great supplier, a great price. I could put a really good price for profit on them and sold them. And in the span of just a couple of months, I actually made a couple thousand dollars that put me in a position to actually pay for our entire Christmas that year. In fact, we got not only Christmas presents for our immediate family, but every sister and brother and sister and brother-in-law, every niece and nephew, everybody, because we earmarked, earmarked that as Christmas money and we got to do that. And that was all because of two little bitty products that we found, we were able to source out, we were able to drop ship, meaning I didn't have to keep an inventory. I could actually ship it directly to the customer from where it was being made, which was absolutely fabulous. And in the end, after all my expenses and everything, the profit was good enough that I got to keep a really big chunk of money. So um, you can actually do uh, areas of time, right? Uh, periods of time that are also good, that are not necessarily niche related, even though they're kind of a niche, but it's time related, as in it's been getting close to Christmas. So people are looking for specific things that are hot items. Another really great time is like Mother's Day, Valentine's Day, right? Those are two other really good times that are time periods that if you find the right products and get a website up in time, you'll be able to um, sell those items, okay? All the rest to me uh, pretty much is niche items. And that's where you're thinking about a specific company, a specific product that's related to a specific niche. So to give you an example, let's say that I was putting together a website where I wanted to sell two products. Um, so I decided I want to sell handbags. That's a pretty good niche. And actually, it's a really popular niche for women. We like handbags. and We like really, really awesome, different, um, uh, eclectic handbags, right? That's that's just our thing. But it would be weird if I sold handbags and then spark plugs. <laughs> that's just not a good combination. So when you're thinking through the products that you want to sell, you need to have the, the continuity in those products, especially if you're putting them on the same website, so that the person that's coming into your website, if they see handbags, everything related to handbags is there too. Because I can pretty much promise you, if I come to your website and I see handbags and then I see spark plugs, I'm probably going to jump right out of the website because I'm not going to take that website serious at all. They're not marketing to my niche. OK, so that's uh, another big thing that is critical to understand is when you start building these websites and especially the ones where you're doing like an e-commerce where you have more than one item that you're selling an e-commerce store, then you want to really narrow it to a niche and keep it really tight. Because that way you'll get repeat customers because your your products make sense to them. They relate to them. They're interested in them. And uh, and there's continuity in what you're offering. OK, so now let's take a look at some of the places that we can go to start finding products, because this to me um, is so much fun. But I do want to tell you that you can get caught in a rabbit hole here. And and I tell you this because I've been caught in the rabbit hole many times. <laughs> so as you're doing this, I want you to take your phone, this awesome tool that you have, and set it to one hour and no longer than one hour. OK, because you will reason yourself into 52,000 stories, but actually get nothing accomplished if you don't set it to a time period. OK, so I say that. Let's jump in and you'll see why. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And then I'm going to go over here to a window. And the first place that we're going to go to is AliExpress. Some of you guys may know about this um, and some of you may not. I'm going to go ahead and copy the website and put it in the chat for those of you that need the website. So hang on just a second. There we go. It is now officially shared. And this is the AliExpress website. And it's uh, every time you come here, there's usually some kind of coupon that you can use. So set up a free account, um, activate the coupons. So if you um, can use them, they'll be there for you. Um, and then once you do that, you set up your account, you get your coupons they're offering you. The next thing is to start playing around and finding really cool stuff in AliExpress. Now, um, this is a website that deals with mostly products from China. 
So these are products that um, have to ship a really long way. If, if you're going to drop ship, then it's usually going to take anywhere from 20 to 45 days to get to the customer. So these are all things that you definitely have to understand before you actually build the website, because this information is going to have to go on your terms when you're giving them information about shipping. But let's go ahead and look at some of the products. So over here, we've got women's fashion, men's fashion, uh, phones and telephone, telecommunications, computers. So let's say that we decided that we want to do something with fidget spinners. Okay, so I'm going to just type in fidget spinners. And when I do that, you're going to see a bunch. And this is like so cool because they've gotten even better than last year or two years ago when I was selling them. But um, you can see all the different designs. And this one right here is the exact one that I sold two years ago. This is the exact one. It was clear and it had light up. And when you spun it, it actually get, gave that really neat kind of rainbow effect. Um, it's really, really cool. So let's take a look at this one right here. This is a fidget spinner that is $1.90 and it says free shipping. That's huge. So let's go ahead and jump in there and take a look at the information on this item. So when I click it, there's a few things that I'm looking for. The first one is I want to carefully, and let me express this to you again, carefully read the um, description right here, the title of it, and then go down to the description and carefully read the description because this is going to be the determination on whether you actually want to sell this or not, okay? Because there's little bitty words here and there that people use, and I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing a minute and look at your eyeballs because I want you to get this. You have to read this so carefully because I have a jewelry store, and I sell jewelry in that jewelry store, and I order some of my products from this place, AliExpress. I have to be so careful in what I'm reading because it may look beautiful. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this is so great. It's got like a pearl and a necklace and a ring and earrings. And then when I look at it in the description, it says like only the chain in this offer. So I'm thinking this is a whole set. And then when I order it, I only get the chain, like nothing else is, is included. So you have to read it very, very carefully. Circle that, underline it, highlight it, um, whatever you can do to make sure you remember that, okay? Because it's not that this person was being deceptive because they had it right there in the description. It's just that sometimes the picture does not always exactly match what the description is, okay? And remember, this is China. It's not the United States. So we would probably get in trouble because our pictures wasn't represented by what was actually sent out. But China, not so much. So um, be very careful. Um, Harice, did you have a question? I just want, uh, yeah, I want to add a couple of things. Uh, read the reviews. Mm -hmm. yeah. That practice, read the reviews, as many reviews as you can, because that will tell you, you know, the experience of those people with that particular uh, factory or company. That's exactly it. That was the next thing I was going to show is not only look at the reviews, guys, read the reviews, but also look at the images. Um, many times customers will put images up and you need to look at the images of the customers, too, because those are just the plain Jane with the regular camera pictures. And you can see a much more real image of that product than the, um, per, than the company image of the product. So that'll even give you a better idea of what that product actually looks like for real. Maurice? Yeah, one more thing is uh, if you can sort by order or number of orders, mm -hmm. that would tell you really how, much, you know, how many uh, people or how many pieces were ordered from that particular factory. So you know that, you know, looks like this one is better than the others. That's exactly it. That's another one that we're going to cover is make sure you're looking at the number of orders that were sold uh, because you may be looking at a product that is absolutely fabulous. And you're thinking, oh my gosh, this is like the bee's knees. I'm going to sell this one. And then you look at how many they've sold and they've sold one. <laughs> that's an indicator that that's probably not a person you want to buy from. Okay, Davida? Yeah, I want to ask you, because you get the smartphones and you constantly have new phones coming out from different companies, 
would that be good as for accessories to sell? Yes, absolutely. You can have an entire store based on cell phone accessories and AliExpress has a ton of them. And those are actually kind of safer because um, they're just little pieces of plastic, little pieces of silicone, little, little things that are not as serious as like jewelry where you have to have, it has to at least look good, right? With jewelry, I have to pre-order everything. I can't just find something, put it up on my store, offer it for sale. I have to actually order it and get it in and decide if it's a quality product that I want in my store. But with the cell phone accessories, it's not as critical because these are just cell phone covers. They're, um, they're cables to charge. Um, these things are not as critical as something like jewelry that has to look good before you sell it. Now, I would definitely suggest that if you have the time that you do pre-order everything and take a look at it, if you have the time, because again, what it looks like in the pictures doesn't always necessarily translate to what it looks like in real life. To be that, that, then also what that does is that allows you to create the videos so that the, whenever these companies like do their unplugs, they, you get the pre-orders before everyone else and you get to test it and then you get, and it gets you a following on your, uh, your YouTube channel. Yes, I wish I still had my um, fidget spinners and my little my little uh, finger monkeys because I had so much fun creating the videos for those. <laughs> we had a, we had a blast creating those videos. Um, so you do you should order ahead of time if you have time. Don't rely on the um, the images from the company to do justice on what that thing actually looks like. Um, so if you can do that. But if not, then just understand that there may be some refund issues or something like that, because if you haven't really seen it for real, um, you may not be describing it in a way that is acceptable to the end user, the end buyer. So um, let me go ahead and jump in and we'll talk a little bit more about what Harith said, which is checking out several areas of each individual item that you're looking at as a potential item to sell. So right here, we need to make absolutely sure we read the title and the description down below. We need to make sure we're looking at reviews. And this one is actually fabulous, you guys. It's 4.8 stars, which is really good. And then 332 reviews. So that means that there's a lot of people that have given reviews to make that a 4.8. That is absolutely excellent. And then the next thing that you need to do is actually go down here, make sure you look at the overview and read every single thing about that item, the description, and then the customer reviews. And here you can see specifically what stars they gave it, the, uh, the review itself. And then again, this is critical to me, is the images from the customer. Okay, these are so good for the company always. But then when you look at the customer ones, that could be the single determining factor on whether you decide to sell it or not. Um, if these are all great pictures, like this is a great one. I really like that picture. And that shows that that, that customer took it out, lit it up, put it down, took a picture. Um, and it's a, it's a really good representation of what that fidget spinner looked like. Um, so really, really good stuff. Here's some more right here. These are great pictures. Um, love that one right there. So it gives you a really good idea, guys, if this is something that you really want to purchase. The next big consideration when you're going through this is to make sure you're looking at the shipping options. Okay. In this one, it says free shipping to the United States from Singapore Post. Now there's a down arrow. If you click the down arrow, it will show you all of the shipping options. This is critical. Okay, I can't express to you enough, this is critical because you're gonna pay um, different shipping depending on how fast you want it to get to the end user. And for this one, it's free shipping using Singapore. What you wanna do for those in the US, having not sold internationally, I don't know all of the international things that you need to think about, but I can tell you definitely from the US, um, the way I go is e-packet because that's the um, best option. And e-packet, if I ordered it today, it would be in by um, September the 22nd. So we're looking at about a 20 day delivery. I need to pad that by five to 10 days because there's processing and stuff like that that has to happen. But 
to be able to ship for that through ePacket would cost me 31 cents per item. So in looking at that, that makes it so I have to pay a dollar and 90 cents for the actual fidget spinner and then 31 cents for the product to be able to get it to my end user. Um, and this one is definitely one that I probably would not put my hands on. I would actually have them ship directly to the provider because I can actually order one item. And that's the next one you need to make sure you look at is sometimes the quantity amount, they don't let you just order one item, which means they're not gonna drop ship one item to the customer. So you wanna make sure you can order one item and that you can ship it directly to your customer. And in this case, it would be a drop ship. Now, let's say that this person did not drop ship and the minimum quantity was 10. I could actually order the minimum quantity and I can get each one of them to me for 30 cents. And then I'm gonna inventory 10 of them. And then as I get orders, I will ship from my location. Okay, so that's the second option is you can have inventory and then deplete that inventory as you get orders. Now that requires that you do a uh, cash layout front. So you have to make sure that you're understanding cash flow. And if you don't know this already, you will know that cash flow is king in any business. So never overextend yourself and say, ooh, these fidget spinners are only $1.90 and shipping is only 31 cents. I'm gonna order 500 of them. <laughs> You got to know your market first. Are people going to actually buy it? It would be way less expensive to order 10, put that in a store and see if they sold. If they sold right away, then maybe your next order can be 100. And then the next order can be 200. But you need to be careful and not overextend it unless you've got a system in place already where you know it's going to sell. Like you've got an existing store. It's going to fit into this existing store nicely then that's a, a different story. But if you're first starting, then you want to just kind of be very gentle if you're keeping an inventory of how many you order ahead of time and test that water before you jump and dive completely in. Chip? Um, any indication of how to know when the bottom is about to drop out of a fad like fidget spinners? Christmas time. At the end of Christmas time, the bottom always drops out. Okay. Definitely. So yeah, um, it's the same exact thing with like Mother's Day and Valentine's Day. When you're looking for those popular things that are hitting, as soon as that holiday is over, they're pretty much done. Very seldom have I seen something last way beyond. Um, a couple of things have last way beyond. The Hatchimals is definitely still a thing. That's funny. And then um, po anything Pokemon just seems to still be kind of hanging around. Um, we actually, one year we did a, uh, year, this is years ago, like back in the Stone Age, uh, Pokemon was a huge thing and Burger King had a special for their kids meals where you could get a Pokemon character inside of the Pokeball along with a card and a Poke Pokemon card. And uh, we had four kids. So we would go to Burger King and we would get everybody kids meals, including us adults. And then we'd take all of the um, <laughs> Pokemon. And so the kids never got to play with them because we'd bring them home and then we'd sell them all on eBay. And uh, y'all, we made a killing. We made an absolute killing, especially if you put like the evolvations together. So like um, Caterpie evolves into uh, Metapod and Metapod goes into Butterfree. If you had all of those and you could make like triple the money that you'd make otherwise. So um, as big of a nerd as I am, obviously you guys know that now, um, you just need to keep your ear to the grindstone and really pay attention to the, those fads and the, those things that are almost evergreen. And Pokemon seems to be one of those evergreen things. About the time that it's dying down, it comes back. Um, and Hatchimals has been a thing for about two years now. So um, Hatchimals is going to be big again this year. In fact, um, they just had a How to Train Your Dragon Hatchimal. So um, it's a big egg and it has Toothless the dragon from How to Train Your Dragon inside of it. And it's a hatchable. So you have to like bang on the egg and move it around and talk to it. And it will decide when it's going to hatch out. Yeah, that's what that does. Um, Davida, go ahead. 
Yeah, but you also have to look at what's the most popular TV show and what they're doing, you know, and what what promotion and like Halloween is coming up and they're already starting to sell the little things for Halloween. If you if you keep abreast of that, then you um, you're able to kind of a, go with the flow. Yeah, there's there's no way to do that halfway, right? You can't just Google something and go, oh yeah, fidget spinners is big. I'm gonna do that. Um, you really have to be in the middle of it and um, really just kind of paying attention. So uh, instead of starting in a moment of time, you've been working on it for quite some time. In fact, um, Halloween is coming up. So way back in like April or May, um, you could have established, a, you know, a, a resource for getting a Halloween costumes and the popular Halloween costumes. You could actually have a store already set up and ready to go to be able to have people order Halloween costumes. So it's all a matter of getting ready way ahead of time. And, and that really does mean that you have to be prepared for sure, especially for these one and one and go, which is the ones that I did where you, you have one product for one website and then you just, you just Facebook advertise that thing big time and, uh, and try to sell that one thing on that one website. So, um, and then you can do an e-commerce store for something like a collection of Halloween costumes or something like that. But um, lots of ways to do it. So let me jump back in and share this AliExpress thing. And so we've talked about reading the title, the description, um, paying close attention to the, the dollar signs. And let me tell you another trick that I do is even though this one says $1.90, its regular price is actually $2.50. So in all of my calculations that I do, I would calculate it as 250. And then if the price was any lower than that, because they were doing a sale, that would just mean more profit for me. Okay. And it's really important that you do that because the sale won't last forever. Um, and it will revert back to that um, 250 at some point. And usually, you know, these sales are just a couple of days, actually, and you want to be able to sell these over a couple of months. So to make sure that you're getting your profit no matter what, you always calculate things based on the higher price, the normal price, then you do the sale price. That's another really important thing that you need to remember. Once you find something that's promising, then you definitely want to add it to your favorites and, and then put it into your cart. Um, and they also have a, a wish list. Um, let me see if I can find the wish list here. I think it's an overview. Um, I can't remember where the wish list is, um, but there is a way to add it to your wish list so that you can find it later. But you can also heart it and uh, and then go back later and look at it. But when I'm doing something like that, you guys, I actually am really targeting a specific thing. So I'm putting all of the things that I'm interested in selling into my cart. And then I can take a look at them later um, because this is a long drawn out process trying to find the right product. And you're going to find um, probably 52 different fidget spinner suppliers, all the different prices, all different colors, all different designs, add them all to your cart. So then you can take a look at all of them at the same time. Um, Chip, I think I saw that you might have a question. Yeah, I'm curious what you ended up selling fidget, your fidget spinners for. I sold it for $9.90. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it was a great, great, great price. Great price. Oh, Shelly. Uh, 995, 995. Oh, sorry. In, in AliExpress, they have also this roulette because in Wish, they yeah. have the roulette. And if you, uh, let's say, you, you pretend that you won't uh, buy from them uh, and you yeah. leave them in the, in, the, in the Wish list, and then you came back and they offer a roulette to offer a, another discount. Yes, you can do that. Um, that roulette wheel, I just put a training out um, the other day on the roulette wheel, and you can absolutely do that to have a coupon code. So if I'm selling it for $9.90, and maybe I'm willing to give up 20% of that uh, that uh, price to be able to maybe go for a lower price but get the sale, then I can actually have the roulette wheel pop in and give them a coupon for a discount. So if they go through the purchase process, they can get the discount, I make the sale, and then I can direct ship it to them. Um, fidget spinners and finger monkeys, guys, I didn't touch any of them when the customer ordered it. All I did was actually go in and make the order and have it shipped to them. So it's really, really easy. I didn't keep any inventory. 
In fact, I don't even have a fidget spinner anymore. And I don't have any of my finger monkeys because as soon as they were done, um, my supply, the ones that I ordered to take a look at, because they had like really cute pink ones and purple ones and blue ones and blue is my favorite color. I should have kept the blue one, but um, I gave like all of them away. But again, you want to order them, take a look at them, see if they're a quality product that you want to actually put your name on that you're selling. Okay. So Susie had a great idea about the um, wheel, uh, the roulette wheel to add that into your website as a last chance engagement for your customer to be able to say, hey, um, don't go away. Try to get your discount first. You can give them a 10% discount or a 20% discount. Just make sure you're doing your calculations, guys, so you get the profit that you want. That is the key. Don't sell this stuff just because you can. <laughs> the goal is to make money. So put in the amount of profit that you want based on the price, the end price that you charge the customer. Calculate your shipping fees. If you're putting any coupons in there, cut that out so that you know exactly how much you would make minimum if everything was considered. And then anything on top of that is gravy, right? And I promise you, this stuff will make you some good money for Christmas time. It's actually really fun. So let's go ahead and take a look some more at AliExpress. So um, these fidget spinners, I think, would be really good ones to use. But let's go ahead and take a look at the um, previous list. So here's some more fidget spinners. And there's so many neat ones, you guys, that I'm, I'm looking at these going, man, I need to sell fidget spinners again. Um, but maybe here's one with um, a dragons on it. That looks like dragons. That's like a really cool one. But I want you to notice that it's $3.84. And only 31 of them are sold. So um, that might be one that you would consider, but um, put it as like a, a last option because you, you definitely don't, it's a risk, right? It's a higher price and less of them are sold. So you, you may not sell any and the, and the quality may not be really good. So that might be when you order, take a good look at it and really decide if you want to sell it. Okay. Um, let's take a look at some more. The, um, oh, here's a really good one that almost looks like Star Trek -y. Um, I'm looking at these going, I need like all of these fidget spinners. Um, here's one that is really different, right? And so this is the process. Now, let me tell you about that rabbit hole, okay? Do you feel like you could get caught in a rabbit hole with this? Just looking at fidget spinners. Yeah. Yeah, you could probably spend hours looking at just fidget spinners trying to decide which ones you want to sell. So that's why I'm telling you, make sure that you have got your timer set and you're, you've got that timer showing so that you know how much time you spent looking at these things. Because it's just so easy to get sucked in. And then it's just like the Internet. You go here to go here to go here to go here to go here. And then you're like, how in the world did I get here? I was looking at fidget spinners. So you want to make sure that you've got a timer there to keep you focused and keep you on task of what you're doing. OK, so now let's take a look at a couple of other things. Let's take a look at the finger monkeys, because that was really a fun one. So finger monkeys. Um, so these are the little finger monkeys that I was talking about. And this is a, a really good image of them. So those are the little finger monkeys right there. They're just little bitty monkeys that sit on your finger. And these are the exact ones that I sold um, a couple of years ago. And let me see if there's any bigger pictures. So you can see, oh, there's the unicorn one. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. The unicorn one is so cute. And they blink their eyeballs. They move their head a little bit. Um, their little tails swish a little bit. So it's really, really, they're really cute. Um, and this is a really good example of the product that I sold. So right here, we've got the pricing. So the first thing is you read the title. And you make sure you read all of the description. Okay, this is critical because you want to make sure you understand exactly what's included in this information. And then pricing right here, we've got uh, 4.9 with 70 reviews and 174 orders. That's not too bad. Again, that's probably to me like on the line of whether I choose to buy from that that person or not. Um, but what would really encourage me is that the rating is a 4.9. So that might be one that I would consider. Now, the pricing of this is $7 to $12.50. And it depends on which little fidget or which little uh, finger monkey you choose. 
because if you click on them, there's different ones. And I believe the unicorn is the one that's probably one of the more expensive ones. So it's $9.30, right? So you want to make sure you're pricing out. If you want to offer different colors and you want to make sure you're uh, pricing out the different colors. Um, on this one, there's a couple colors that are not available. They're obviously sold out. Um, but you can see just how fling and fling and cute these are, right? Um, and this one, I actually got them for around that price. I think I paid about $12.50 for them. And I sold them for $29.90. And it was a huge profit. And uh, they sold faster than I could get them ordered. Um, people just wanted these. They absolutely wanted these. And uh, they didn't care. I probably could have set it at $39.95. And I just still sold them. Um, because they were just so popular that year. So this was really, really well. Um, also right here, I'm allowed to order one at a time. So that's huge. And then the shipping is by e-packet and it happens to be free. So for me, that would be a huge benefit is I'm shipping by e-packet and it's gonna be free shipping, so no extra cost. If I look at all the other shipping options, I can go AliExpress Standard, um, or EMS, and my preference always is ePacket. And what ePacket is, is it's China's, um, uh, China has made a deal with the US and with the United States Postal Service to be able to deliver things from China to the US through the Postal Service. So that's kind of what ePacket is. So when you use ePacket, you're actually not using, you're using a China service, but it's connected to our um, our United States Postal Service. So it gets to you maybe in a little bit better condition than if it went through another service, okay? I've shipped many different ways and ePacket has always been the better one out of all of them, okay? And also ePacket for uh, many, many items, especially small items, is gonna be free. Uh, and if it's not free, it's very negligible how much the shipping is, okay? So, um, uh, Shelly, excuse me, you do you have uh, an idea that uh, maybe uh, if I wanted to buy a, a lot, a bunch of it, mm -hmm. uh, is that affect the way that the shipping is or the prices? Um, you can actually look, let's, let's take a look on that, um, the finger monkeys. What you'll see is you can uh, click that up button. So on this one, we can order up to um, 491. So if I order, let's say 50, let's say 60 of them. So as you can see right there, the shipping actually changes. So I have to click that down there to see what's going on. And ePacket is no longer an option because ePacket is specifically smaller packages. If you go with a larger package, then you're gonna to have to use a different method. So for this one, you've got the option of AliExpress standard shipping, which is gonna be, um, this is the estimated delivery. So for us, that'd be about 17 days. And then EMS, which is um, uh, September the 30th. So that'd be about 28 days. So you just kind of have to decide which method. Um, obviously you would not want to go with the EMS because that's going to be like $131. So you have to look at shipping. Shipping is one of those critical areas that if you make a mistake, it could be very costly. Costly. Um, I remember one time I wasn't paying attention to shipping very well. And I ordered some jewelry for my jewelry company that I was really, really excited about. And it was just a couple pieces. So maybe about 50 bucks that I was buying a product but I didn't check the shipping and shipping cost me like $150 <laughs> for $50 in product. So um, take it from the person that has done it wrong. Yeah. And, and here in Brazil, I don't know. Yes. I don't know. The, I don't know how it's there in USA, but here in Brazil, things come, uh, things uh, arrive in Curitiba. And that is like, um, I mean, <laughs> It's like in another country. Yeah, I've been to Curitiba, actually. <laughs> so I don't know how it is there, but you it's have to harder. also see where they coming up. Yeah, it's harder. One of the other things I had to learn was um, that I had to be very specific about where I could ship as well. Because when I was selling my finger monkeys, 
Um, what I didn't know was that um, I had a person order from, uh, I don't think it was Portugal. I can't remember what country it was, but I had it open where I could ship internationally. And I thought I'd done my, I had done my homework, but it turned out that the item that they bought, the finger monkeys, you weren't allowed to ship toys there. You were not allowed to sell a product to ship toys there. I don't even know why. But when I went to start setting up everything to do the shipping for it, it would not let me ship that toy there. Um, so I had to refund the customer. They actually ordered a bunch of them. And I had to refund their money because I, I wasn't allowed to ship there. So um, you're going to run into issues like that. And so that's the, the another part that we'll talk about is making sure that you've got a system in place for customer support. So that you do have those kinds of issues. You can deal with them as quickly as possible. The worst thing you can do is just wait and a person not be notified. You don't, you don't talk to that person, you know, six weeks down the line when they're supposed to be getting a product, you tell them, Oh, by the way, I'm not allowed to ship your to your country. Um, so you got to stay on the customer support side too. Um, but there's just a lot of homework. So now when I do these things, I actually keep them just in the United States because that way I don't have to do a whole lot of homework with what I can and can't do in other countries. Um, for some of you guys that are in other countries, you're just going to have to learn what you can and can't do. Because unfortunately, I wish I knew everything, but I don't. <laughs> so you guys will have to learn for your country. Um, let me go ahead and share again. And uh, th so that's the shipping method. Also notice right here, it says ship to you and then it's got United States. You can actually do your homework and find out um, where these these items can ship and what how much it will cost and I I think now that it might have been Peru that that it was ordered from so we look at Peru so Peru says that if, if I want to ship directly from the supplier to Peru it's either going to cost me $177 or $237 to ship directly to Peru from the supplier so you can get a really good idea of cost associated with if you're shipping outside of your own country, okay? So those are the finger monkeys. Now, um, let me tell you that you can go into just about any category in AliExpress. So let's go ahead and check here. I'm gonna go um, luggage. Sounds good, I haven't checked luggage, so this will be a new one on me. So we've actually got luggage right here. We've got fabulous looking luggage. This would be one that you definitely wanna order ahead of time so you can see the, the, the real true quality of it before you actually sell it. I would love, I've thought many times about selling uh, these little bags. These are so cute. Um, they're the uh, children's luggage and they've got characters on them. So Mickey Mouse and the Frozen Elsa and Barbie, all those are really great. So the pricing is $34.65 to $39.87. But again, I never go on the sale price. I go on the full price. So my maximum price would be $72.50. Um, and then I'd have to scroll down here and take a look at what they're made of um all the specific information about those products including really carefully looking at whatever images they have you see right here they've got a measurement so you can see how big they actually are um these are absolutely fabulous and uh, as i'm scrolling down i'm thinking man i need to put a store together for this but these are really really cute i think they'd be fun to sell in like a children's oriented store and oh i love that one that was cute i gotta get me one of those um, but the next thing I'm going to do is look at how many have been sold. So here I've got 213 orders, 57 reviews, and an overall score of 4.9, which is actually pretty, pretty good. 213, again, is like right on that cusp of should I or shouldn't I. But since I've got quite a few good reviews at 4.9, then it's a good consideration. Um, used to be that they had a pretty good rating of the companies on aliexpress but they don't do that so much anymore there used to be like a diamond level and a four diamond and a five diamond and a six diamond but they're not doing that as much but you can also go over here to customer reviews make sure you read the customer reviews and then you look at the pictures to make sure you see them this is a great picture because it shows you it's going to be bubble wrapped right so that's really important to show you that they're going to carefully wrap that bad boy for you um, another picture so that's another really cute picture of a product and another one right there so you can get a really good idea of what these look like how they're going to be packaged and just the overall reviews so the next thing is hmm, i think i might want to sell this so what can i sell this for 
So obviously if I'm paying full price of 7250, then I'm going to have to put some kind of price on there where I make some money. Um, and let me look at uh, shipping too. I've got free shipping via e-packet. So the price I'm going to pay is a maximum of $72.50. So what do I do next? How do I know what to what price to put on it? Well, let's go ahead and take a look. I'm going to go ahead and just do a search. And I'm going to say um, frozen. I'm going to go to Google because Google always does better. So frozen Elsa luggage. Boom. And here we go. We've got some frozen Elsa luggage. Lots of different ones. And here's probably the closest of what I was looking at. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, but if I click on that, let's see if we can find a price on it. So there we go. And this one's $110.99. So um, I can really get a good idea of how much money I can put on top of that $72.50 by doing my homework on what are these selling right now. So for me, at $72.50, I'm willing to put it at maybe um, $109.95, something like that. And that would put me at a good profit. I don't have to pay for shipping fees. I could send it directly out as a drop ship. And, uh, and I'm making a good amount from my product. So does everybody kind of understand that? Yeah. And that's just eyeballing it. That I would have to write all these numbers down to you guys. So you want a piece of paper and a pen. You want to write these numbers down. You want to say, okay, this is the product price maximum. This is my shipping. Um, uh, these are things that I want to consider. So I want to make a, a profit of at least 30 bucks on this. So I'm going to set the price at this. And then you want to kind of start thinking about um, that out of that profit, you know, comes advertising. So you want to make sure you're putting enough money in there to cover any advertising that you might do like Facebook ads. Um, Andre? Uh, yeah, I just noticed that uh, when you went to search, uh, Walmart came up first and I saw prices like up 47 and up sort of thing. Yeah, so what, don't even don't even think about the Walmart stuff. Really? Right? Yeah, this is this is so beyond Walmart. Um, if you've got a product that people see that they're rabid for, Walmart won't even play into the equation. Um, they, it just won't because they'll buy it. Um, you will. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd have never thought that those fidget spinners would sell for twenty nine ninety five, and they sell <laughs> faster than I could order them. So um, from experience, and they could get them at Walmart. They could absolutely get them at Walmart for like nine ninety five. Um, but there was a supply and demand issue. There was here you can buy it from here, and I've advertised it as guaranteed delivery by Christmas. So it was huge, right? So there, even yeah. though Walmart is a factor, I don't think it's a big as big a factor as you think it is. If you've got a good website, good uh, content to be able to sell your product, um, and then you put things like guaranteed by Christmas or um, wow your granddaughter with this amazing suitcase or <laughs> so she can spend the night with you, right? You know, whatever you're right. targeting, whatever that niche is, um, that's what you're trying to do is just grab their attention and they're like, yeah, my granddaughter does need that suitcase to come spend the night with me, right? Um, and who does not want to spend $105.95 on their granddaughter? <laughs> <laughs> right, I so, get it. Um, so there's just <laughs> ways that you can get around that. I think that sometimes you can reason your way out of doing something because it's something like Walmart. And honestly, if I had listened to my own head, I would have reasoned my way right out of selling the fidget spinners especially because they were all over. Fidget spinners that year were everywhere. You could buy fidget spinners for five bucks. So in my, in three bucks, in my brain, I, I really thought there's no way that this fidget spinner is going to sell for $9 and 95 cents. But I, I guess I had a really good video. I had a good website um, and people were just ready to buy it. And it was right there. It was um, ready to buy and they just jumped in and bought it. Um, so I, I could have reasoned my way out of it, but I didn't. And I'm glad I didn't. Um, but I did do my homework. It wasn't like I woke up one day and I said, I'm going to sell food spinners. Um, it was, uh, I did a lot of homework to kind of back up everything that I was doing. Okay. And let's go ahead and share my screen again. So this is a product that I think that I would feel really comfortable selling. And actually, because I, I love my grandchildren and I actually really love the, these luggage items, 
this would be something that I would enjoy selling, right? It would be something that I'd have a lot of fun putting together a website and, uh, and selling these products. Now, another thing that I did was whenever I sold a product, um, I would always contact the seller and ask them if I could use their stock images. And 100% of the time they said yes. Um, Cause I told them I was wanting to sell the product. I was creating a website. I'd be interested in purchasing straight from them. Could I use their, um, their stock images? And not only did they 100% of the time say yes, many times they'd send over stock images that like didn't have the, the name on them. Like these don't have the name, but there's a lot of companies that will put the name of their company across the image so that you cannot use their stock images. And they would actually send me the images without their company name on it so that I could use those images. So they're ready for you to sell their product. And a lot of times they'll actually give you stock images to be able to do that. Okay. Um, any questions about what I've covered so far with AliExpress? Is it exciting, you guys? <laughs> How many of you guys are like, I'm going to start a store? <laughs> it's really cool. Um, Shelly, uh, can you can you explain a little bit about the um, about why you will do uh, one uh, website for each product and not a a, a store of uh, different you know different departments? I actually have a store where I have a bunch of products. That's my jewelry store. And then I have the fidget spinners and the um, finger monkeys, which I don't sell those anymore. I retired those websites. But um, the, what I was doing with the finger monkeys and the fidget spinners is the one product for Christmas time. Those were specific, specifically designed to target Christmas time. So when I did the advertising for it, I made sure to target um, adults with children, own their home, had a job, um, and, and that was pretty much the target area, right? That's how I targeted them. And then on the website, I made sure to put in their guaranteed delivery by Christmas. And those two things, I think, were the two things that uh, made it so successful. Um, and it was actually just, I, I felt like it was shooting fish in a barrel sometimes because I just posted some ads and Shazam orders started coming in. Um, so it's really, really um, very easy to do. I don't think it's that easy every time. Um, so I would say definitely do your homework and you're going to fail a few times before you're successful. I think I was just really, really lucky with those two things um, that I just hit them at the exact right time. But you can actually go and take a look. Let me share my screen. And uh, I'm just going to go here and we're going to type in um, top products for Christmas 2019. And if I do that, uh, it's, here's the first one, top 10 holiday gifts. Uh, so I click on that for 2019. And it looks like the uh, heads up display is one of them. That's cool. Um, let's see, this is a website, I guess. Um, this is Arctic Air, survive the heat weight with this cool and tiny portable air conditioner. So we can actually see if there's any of those on AliExpress. Um, extra PC, that would be a good one for AliExpress. Uh, Go Audio, so premium Bluetooth wireless earbuds. Um, earbuds are all over AliExpress. You can get them all colors, all shapes, all sizes. Those are always going to be a good seller, especially if, if you have a good price on them. And they're just kind of unique in the way they look. Um, the uh, a portable safe. I'm not sure if AliExpress has one of those, but you can check it. Um, a charger um, for your phone. One of the things that I've had a lot of success selling is the uh, portable chargers that are solar powered. So you can actually plug them in and they power by solar power. So, um, and you can find those all over AliExpress too. Um, let's see, a HD antenna. So you can see really quickly that we can find several items that are going to be hot sellers, so to speak. I mean, somebody had to create this website so you don't know where they're getting this information. So um, what you do is look at it, you write down the ones that you're interested in, check out a, more, a couple more websites, see if those same things are listed on those websites, make some connections so that you're making some really good decisions on the items that you want to sell. So if I, um, I went over here and closed that window, um, Christmas fun gifts for adults, I'm not sure we're going to take a look at that, that's a little scary. 
Um, the top August promos, I'm not sure about that. Unique gifts for teens, I'm not sure about that. Uh, 100 plus best gifts for Christmas. I'm thinking we can take a look at that. So let's look down here. Oh my gosh. So um, 50 plus gifts right here. Genius stocking stuffers, shopping for the best. So um, kids stuff. So yeah, this would probably be a good, eye, good place to get some ideas. But again, you want to surf a little bit and get some corroborating ideas, right? You don't go off of just one website because then you may make a, a beer left turn that, that you didn't expect to make and it doesn't sell a single one. So you really do have to take a really good look at the things that are selling. And uh, and to get a really good idea for toys, you can say uh, top toys for 2019. And Amazon is pretty good. Let's see, um, seven year old boys, that's a little bit scary. Um, best new toys for 2019, that's probably a good one. These are the hottest toys. So let's see what, oh, it's a click through. I hate these things, I'll look at a couple of them. Oh, fingerlings, they're still there, you guys. The finger monkeys, it just so happens that now they have a shark. So this is a finger shark instead of a finger monkey. Um, the kindy kids, this is actually huge. This goes with the law dolls and stuff like that. So that's gonna be big. Um, Shopkins have been big for a couple of years. Um, I saw this the other day, a Wowie Lucky Fortune bracelet. So this is a little bracelet that's inside of a fortune cookie and they break it open to see which bracelet they get. And one out of every um, 100 designs has a gold bracelet. So if you get lucky and open it, there's actually a gold bracelet in there. Um, Nerf is always great, but they have a Nerf with Fortnite and Fortnite is a PC game that's huge. Um, Bloom Dolls, I haven't done a lot with Bloom Dolls, can't tell you about that. Treasure Aliens, don't know. Crayola, this is always a, a hit, is any kind of Crayola kit. Doodle Bear, I saw this the other day too, and that's cute. Not sure if um, AliExpress would have something comparable, but it's a little bear that you doodle on and then you can actually um, scan it with an app on your phone. Um, that would be a good one, The um, just the kit. Any kit thing is, is always good. Um, I don't know what that is. It's some kind of race. Um, nail stamper, no. Uh, this one, a little doggy that moves. That's a good one. Mr. Potato Head is always good. I even have my own Mr. Potato Heads. Um, I have uh, Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head. I have a Darth Vader Potato Head. I have, um, I have a ridiculous amount of uh, potato heads. Um, to me, that was an amazing toy as a child. I thought it was fascinating that I could put all the pieces inside the potato and then carry it with me. Um, so it was a, a travel toy, which was awesome. So I still love the Mr. Potato Head. Um, Baby Shark Play-Doh. Again, Baby Shark. If you guys don't know this, Baby Shark is huge. I'm not going to sing the song because then you guys will all have it in your head and you'll kill me. Um, Lego, always good. So as you can see, guys, there's a lot of top toys. If you just really have fun with it and take a look, you can find some great ones. Um, and what you're looking for is corroboration meaning you've looked at multiple websites that have said that these items are going to be popular. And when you've got that corroboration that multiple sites have said these are going to be popular, then you've got an item that you really need to look at closely. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, all of you guys are looking at toys now, aren't you? But sometimes marketing is not like a, 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 a as sciences is is like right. you yeah, you funny. you feel in your guts mm -hmm. like like a few years ago I was selling uh, expensive uh, tennis shoes kicks mm -hmm. and yeah. in here in here the people were wow this is you know Nike and 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 there in the states Nike is like you know it's a Nike right, but right. Here, <laughs> wow. This is a, Geeks, you know, and I was selling like like big as uh, huge prices for Nikes. Yeah, yeah, and it is all about. It, it is a, a lot of times. It's not a science. You're right. It's about intuition. Um, and and I'm a nerd, right? You guys know that about me now. I love playing uh, certain video games. I I do the Rubik's cube. Um, I'd rather do the Rubik's cube than um, you know have a sharp poke to the eye. Um, there's I'm just a, a high level nerd. Actually, my kids call me a neek because I'm a nerd and a geek. So they call me a neek. 
Um, so those are the things that I'm going to relate to. So I'm going to love the Pokemon stuff. I'm going to love the items that are related to uh, video games. Like I love Legend of Zelda. So those are the things I'm going to relate to. So my intuition is going to be towards those types of things. Um, ladies handbags, not so much. I'm just not a fashionista. So I'm not going to be going out and buying high fashion uh, handbags to be able to resell because I'm the dork that likes the handbag that has Marvel comics on it. Right. Um, so it's just, you have to know where your talents are, where, where your passion is, and then work within those as far as really listening to your intuition. Um, Dominic, go ahead. Okay. I got to have the Mr. Potato head, Darth Vader. You know me, you know, I'm a star Wars freak. I mean, come on. Oh, do you have uh, a handy? Oh my gosh. You so saw me on Star Wars Day. I had Darth Vader in my right. place. Right, I right. I have a Darth Vader uh, coffee cup. Okay. <laughs> I am a Star Wars freak. I got to have it. Where'd you get it? I want it. I want it for me. Not yep, just, right. I want it for me. <laughs> right. And when you sell, when you see something like that, and I want you to verify this for me because I just want everybody to understand why I was saying Walmart doesn't matter, even though in our brains, it does matter. Um, Walmart has a lot of products and to be able to walk up and down the aisles and see every product they have. I mean, there's, I would go to the kids section, but some of you guys would not. So you may never actually find the Darth Vader potato head at Walmart, but boy, howdy, if you saw an advertisement for it on the internet, and you said, holy cow, look, there's a Darth Vader potato head. I'm, it's kind of one of those eclectic items where you're not going to think, I'm going to go to Walmart and get that. You're thinking, I want that, right? So that's why, Andre, I say that even though Walmart is a small consideration, I don't think it's as big as you think it is because the convenience of having that thing right in front of you so that you can order it is actually a really big deal. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, because I think Dominic just actually proved my point. <laughs> um, Davida, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, Mr. Potato Head's been around forever, so that's and kids love that because it's it's. But the thing is, if you think about it, when someone sees it on the internet, first they're not going to think, "Oh, I'll go to Walmart to get it." First thing they'll say is, "I want it. I'll get it there because I saw it there." Right. And in our society is, is more and more becoming online purchasers, right? When I, I know for Christmas time, I rarely go shopping in stores now. Um, almost everything I buy is online, which is probably, you know, not the best thing, not supporting my local business. But um, the reality is it's so easy in my busy, 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 busy life. I can pull up, you know, stuff and purchase and I'm done. All I do is wait for it to come in. And well, why would well, you, why would you is, fight think the people? It's madness. You you fight people. I know, I know. It is madness. Well, You're right. <laughs> yeah. Also, also, if you think about it, now when they talk about what is it, uh, Black Friday, they they always talk about Cyber Monday and how much sales increase over every Cyber Monday. And for a lot of people, it's a lot better than going to the mall and shopping because how many times before the internet they would have things, they would leave things sitting sitting at the bench when they would sit down. Right. Oh, now, don't don't get me wrong. I love going to the mall. I'm a mall rat. I love going to the mall because the mall is where you get those great cookies and you can do the 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 teddy bear workshop, right? Where you get to dress the teddy bear and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and then of course the food at the mall. Um, but I, I do a lot of my shopping online and you guys with, um, starting this process of looking at putting physical products online, you have to kind of think about those things that, that our society is really making a move to purchasing more things online. So if you're offering the right products, even price is not that big of a deal. If you're offering the right products. Okay. Chip. Um, are there other uh, online product sources you want yes. to get to? Yes, yes. Yep. I'm going to go into a couple more really quick. Any other questions, you guys, or comments? So are you guys excited about this idea of um, looking at products to sell? Yeah. Um, any of this news so far to anybody? <laughs> Frank's like, nope, I knew it all. 
no, no, no. This is actually new. This is really good oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. Sure yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So That's I do have a question, though, since we're on the subject of like, um, I guess the decision for me is whether or not I would get quantities, multiple quantities sent to me and me send it to the customer because I can't imagine that somebody would maybe wait the 25 days. And then what happens with the EPAC if they order something and then they say they didn't receive it? Is there, how, how do you work through that? There's, there's actually a complete tracking system. Okay. So you actually know at every point that it hits where it's at. So gotcha. you can track it along with, if you want to give the tracking number to the customer. Um, uh, but I, I usually never do, that's a lot, that's an extra step right to have to put the tracking in unless you've got something a program integrated into your store okay. um you know like shopify you can integrate aliexpress very easily but in our magento store we don't have that quite yet unless you buy a, a plugin so um what i typically did like with my my finger monkeys and fidget spinners is i just had it in the terms that it could take up to four to six weeks to deliver and that way they knew in between that time to expect the order. Now, um, Frank, and I'm really glad you asked that question, is you do have to decide, do I want to inventory it myself, like order a quantity and inventory it myself, or do I want to drop ship these onesies? Um, I love the drop shipping. It's so easy because I don't touch any of it. I don't have to worry about calculating pricing for me managing you know, when you get it in, you have to move it from whatever box it's in into where you're going to store it until you sell it. Um, eventually, if your store gets big enough, then you have to hire people to help you do that. Um, so it, it gets really uh, big and bulky. And just to give you an example, um, my store that I have, my jewelry store, because so many pieces have to come together to make the product, then I have to have inventory because I have the pendant and then I have the necklace and I have the oyster that goes with the pendant. Um, then I have a little velvet bag that I put all of it in and all of that is the final product, right? So I have to pre-order all of this stuff and each one has lead time coming in. So the necklaces, the actual necklace part, I may get in two days, but the actual oysters may take 30 days. So I have to really plan out all of the ordering to make sure I have enough inventory. My orders are so big now. We actually have um, 1,000 people selling for us. We have 1,000 affiliates. So I have to organize all of that inventory to make sure it is kept supremely organized so that my people can come in every Friday and fulfill orders. It is an absolute pandemonium sometimes trying to keep inventory, keep track of it, keep when I'm supposed to order. Um, there's a lot to it, um, along with just running a business and dealing with customer service. I had one guy that apparently the order just slipped through our cracks and he contacted us about the order and was so angry because he'd ordered a, a necklace with an oyster for his wife that was having a baby and we missed the order somehow. I don't know how. The shipping information got made, so I know that we knew that it was supposed to go out, but it was never actually shipped. So um, we didn't get his order to him until after the baby was born, which was like tragic. So um, customer service is a very real thing too, but we found out that it was a boy. So we added in a necklace that said, um, it's a boy. And that was another pendant. And I added a um, oyster, an extra oyster in there too. So that person got not only their necklace that they chose, but it's a boy necklace with another pearl for it. So, um, you know, you just try to do the best that you can to make it make it good for the customer. But um, all of those things are factors. And holding an inventory, you guys, is a lot of work. If you start growing and growing big, it's a whole heck of a lot of work. So the way I would start to get my feet wet is drop shelf. And then from drop shipping, learn what you can learn, do what you can do. And then as you start building, maybe then think about uh, bringing in some inventory for those things that you know are selling really well. Okay. Is that good? Okay. So let's take a look at some other places. AliExpress is one of my favorite, but um, there's another one that is um, the, the father of AliExpress, and that is Alibaba. So let's take a look at Alibaba right quick. So let me move this thing out of the way. So Alibaba.com. 
And Alibaba is the uh, just like the bigger version of AliExpress. So this is one that um, you're going to order multiple items. Um, it typically is difficult to find uh, items here where you can only order onesies. So let's take a look at fidget spinners. I'm not sure they'll even ha have them here. All right, so we've got some fidget spinners. And you can see on this fidget spinner right here, the minimum order is 100 pieces. Um, this one right here is minimum order of 2,000 pieces. So AliExpress is going to be one of those that you use if you do want to keep inventory on hand. So um, you can see that they've got really similar products. There's not really a whole lot of difference in the pro Oh, that one's cool. I like that one. But um, not a whole lot of difference in the products that are offered. The difference is going to be the pricing. It's going to be less. And then you have a minimum number of orders. So you're usually going to have to do an inventory. There are exceptions. So here's this one right here, which is a fidget, fidget spinner in the shape of a Pokeball. And this one, you're allowed to order one piece. So always flip flop between AliExpress and Alibaba. And if you find a good product that you want to sell, look at, them, at both of them. If you can find it on Alibaba and you can find it as one piece to drop ship, the price is going to be better on Alibaba. OK, that's where the price is better. But if you're trying to drop ship and do one piece, you just have to really look hard for the drop shipping one piece. OK, any questions about that? And Alibaba is almost exactly the same as AliExpress. Um, it's just that um, one's the, the multiple inventory type situation and the other one is onesies and twosies. OK, and then the next one that is an absolutely fabulous resource is a DH gate. So I'm going to go to dhgate.com. And DH gate is the um, like a United States version of AliExpress. So if you want to be able to ship things like faster inside the US, then you can actually order through DH gate. Now the prices are just a tad bit higher. So you're going to pay a little bit more of a premium price. So if I go to fidget spinners, and we'll see if they have any. And so right here, we've got fidget spinners. And right here are, is a collection of fidget spinners that are $1.32 to $2.02. So that's not too bad. And then um, for the uh, item, it's free shipping. But I want you to notice that there is a minimum order, and that's 50 pieces. So you'd have to order at least 50 of these. So that would mean that you need to keep an inventory. Um, this one right here is the same thing, minimum order of 300 pieces. So you have to really look closely on this one to find the onesies and twosies to be able to drop ship, especially on low ticket items like fidget spinners. So for a fidget spinner, for a finger monkey, those are low ticket dollar items. And so that would be AliExpress. If you go into higher ticket items like handbags, um, pieces of clothing, stuff like that, um, DHgate has those items and usually they put those as onesies and twosies. So if I go to DHgate and let's look at um, luggage. So on luggage, um, you can see that, that we've got some luggage items here. And for this item, there's not a minimum order, no minimum order, no minimum order. So these items would probably be, um, you could order just one at a time and drop ship to the customer. And also you want to be looking at the free shipping to see if they actually offer the free shipping. So, uh, and all of these are, you have to look carefully at DH gate to make sure they're actually coming from the United States. So if I click on this item um, and I really like that bag, uh, I need to make sure that it is shipping from a specific location. So let me see if I can remember where to check that out from. Um, <laughs> But um, United States via e-packet, so that, that means it's shipping from China. So right here, it's stocked in China. So this is an item on DH gate that is actually coming from China. If you find a case where it's coming from China, then it'd be better to go to AliExpress. You get a better price on it, okay? So there's just a lot of things to remember going between the three groups, but Alibaba, AliExpress, and DH Gate are the three best places to find resources for your physical products to sell for your stores. 
Okay, so those are the three main areas I wanted to focus on. Um, do you guys have any questions about those, uh, those places? And let me um, give you the address. So www.alibaba.com and www.dhgate.com. All right, so inside the chat, I put both of those website um, links so that you can have those. And uh, any questions, you guys? We talked about a lot today, didn't we? <laughs> so what we'll do tomorrow is we'll actually build a basic website selling one product. So we're gonna pretend like we found an amazing product. We're gonna sell that one product. So we're gonna set it up so that you can sell it, gather, gather the shipping address, and be able to ship it out, order it to the person and ship it directly to them. And, uh, and then probably the next day, we're gonna do a couple of products and some bump sales. And then the um, Friday, by the, by the end of the week on Friday, we'll actually talk about setting up Magento as a store for your physical products. So you can do multiple products, okay? Everybody got it? Your homework tonight, and let me preface this. Do not fall down the rabbit hole, okay? One hour, that's what you give yourself is one hour. But I want you to jump on either AliExpress, Alibaba, or DHgate, and I want you to just investigate some ideas you have on some physical products that you could possibly sell. It doesn't mean that you're locking yourself down to sell anything. It's just I want you to look and see what's out there because it is amazing what is out there. It really is. So have a good look. Don't, narrow, don't uh, limit yourself yet on a niche. Just play with it, have fun, find things. Um, if you do start to feel yourself narrowing down to a niche, then start doing some homework on other sites that are similar. What are they selling? What prices are they selling them for? Okay, but open that brain, um, let it flow with ideas, brainstorm, have fun with it. Because right now you're not locked into anything. So this is that time you get to really play and have fun and find something that you're really passionate about. Whether it's um, fidget spinners, finger monkeys, luggage, handbags, whatever you wanna focus on, you guys have a lot of fun working, um, you know, finding neat things. But again, set your timer because you will go down that rabbit hole if you're not careful, okay? All righty guys, I'm gonna go ahead and let you go, but have a wonderful time looking at all those wonderful products. And uh, we'll jump in tomorrow and make us a website selling the product. You guys have a great, great day, and I'll see you tomorrow. Andre, question? Uh, yes, I'm just wondering if the ambassador meeting is still on for tomorrow. Um, as far as I know, yes, but be watching okay. for any announcements, okay? Okay, good. Thanks. All right. Bye, you guys. Have a great day. Right. And don't forget mm -hmm. to make something amazing with Builderall. Bye, guys. <laughs>